Hello everybody, welcome back to Watercolor Notebook. I'm Pam and so glad you're here with me to give this floral scene a try. We're going to use some masking techniques with tape and liquid frisket along with some finishing touches using white gouache and spatter. So I'm working with a reference photo and I've been looking at what prairie smoke flowers look like. These are after the balloons have been spent and this is what we have left. It's, it's like uh, these very wispy little pieces to the flower and I just thought they were so unique and beautiful I wanted to try to plan a way to be able to paint all of those glistening little fronds. So I've decided to use some liquid frisket and a masking technique and um, I've been just playing around with a little thumbnail sketch of the flowers. Now, I wanted to make sure that my, uh, my, the colors that I chose for my palette are all very harmon harmonious and that I got the orangish, pinkish parts of the flower heads the right color. So I, I'm just, I just did a few thumbnails. And what I like about this little study and I'll bring this up so you can see it a little bit better. I like the wispiness of these brush strokes here and the way that they are all tucked kind of neatly into the little, into the stem and cup of the flower. I also like using this pattern for some of the little leaves that run up the stem. And the stem is very kind of woody, like a, like a thistle plant would be. So there's, uh, clusters of short little green leaves coming off the stems which are basically brown with a little peach tint to them so there are parts of this thumbnail that I really like I like using the wet and wet to create the stems and here's a closer shot of the wet and wet to create the stem on the main flower you can see that I didn't use all of the parts of my reference photo. I just chose to use a few of the flowers and a few of the stems. So let's talk about masking. I'm using just just plain painter's tape and I wanted to mask out the white parts of the flower heads. I'm only going to be making two flower heads. So you can see here on my reference photo how the white in the center here needs to really stand out in these flowers. So, and the only way to achieve that is to preserve the white of the paper. So I thought that masking would be the best way to go with that. Now I already went ahead and masked my painting because it does take a few minutes to do that and I didn't want you to have to sit and watch while I did all of that masking. But just to show you how it's done, I just take a pair of scissors and I'm making just simple little teardrop shapes with my tape. Okay, very simple, just like that. So I made a couple of those and then I took the tape that was left over and created the other thinner strips of masking to create kind of a halo effect around the um, central most whitest part of my flower. Okay, and I just masked out a little bud down here and two flower heads and that should do it. Because I'm gonna paint my background in first. But before we start on the background, we need to add a little bit of frisket. Now this is called uh, liquid frisket white mask and it's kind of a um, a rubbery type substance it will dry like rubber and we'll be able to lift that off of our painting so it's very watery when you work with it I like to use a toothpick because right now I'm looking for some very thin wispy lines at the end of my flower heads so I'm not being very careful with this. I'm just laying down some kind of wispy lines that will create white 
very fine lines when I when I remove it later on. So I'm kind of concentrating on my flower head. All right, it's okay for a few of those spatters because on my painting there are actually quite a few highlights throughout, both on the leaves and the flower heads. So not concerned about the spatters, it's actually helping. Okay, and I want some down here by my little bud. Okay, some on this down. All right, so that's all we really need. As you can see, I was not being very careful with that. So it's going to be very loose and abstract. Now, when you're working with Frisket, before we paint on it, we have to make sure that that is completely dry. So I will give a few minutes for that to happen and we'll be right back to put the background in. Okay, we're back. First, let's wet the paper where the sky area is gonna be in our painting. And I'm looking at the reference photo and it's concentrated mostly up in the left corner. So let's wet that. I am using Stonehenge 140 pound cold pressed paper and we're doing a five by seven. I'm using Verditer Blue from Daniel Smith for the sky. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this moisture because I don't want it to run down to the bottom of my painting. Okay, drop in the sky, drop in a little blue for the sky and let that mix around. Next, under that, we're, we see that we have a lot of green landscape in the reference, so I'm going to go ahead and mimic that. I'm going to stay away from this blue sky area when I put my water down because I don't want my sky to bleed into my foreground. And I'm using mostly sap green with a little olive in this. sap and a little bit of raw umber to that. We'll let that just flow down to the bottom of my page. And we're going to get a little bit darker brown as we get down toward this edge. Okay. Just picking up a few puddles to avoid blooms and we can let that dry just for a bit. Okay, before removing the masking, I want to drop in a few stems that will be hiding behind the flower head. So this is my main flower head and I want to Put a nice, bold stem, it's going to cut straight through. using my mixture of greens and the raw umber. And then I'm gonna drop in 
just a little more green and that will um, bleed out to give us a little bit of variegation in the stem. Go ahead and drop in the stem where our bud is going to be. Right. When you're doing stems, if you always round out this little elbow where uh, stems and leaves meet. It gives it a little more of a realistic look. All right, now I'm going to take some lighter green and just pull out some lighter stems that are coming off of the main stem here. that up a little bit further. And then let's have one more. There we go. Round this out a little bit. And darken the bases of our stems. That's looking pretty good. So let's let that dry and then we'll come back and take the masking off. Okay, it's time to remove the masking, but I'm going to leave the frisket on because those are the latest highlights. So I still want to leave that on until more toward the end of the painting but it's time to be painting flower heads so I'm going to remove the masking tape from those so just carefully lifting the tape We can see on the reference photo that the uh, flower heads are just these very um, fluid fibers and they're very shimmery. And the color that I mixed for this was red iron oxide and I mixed it with some opera rose. So we have kind of a brown and a pink mixed together and we're going to use that for these little fronds so let's find the base and you can also see at the base of these flower heads the little green cup that is attached to the stem so let's put that in Let's put that in for this one. Okay. 
I'm going to carry it down the stem a little bit. Rinse my brush. I'm going to go into this peachy, orangish color and put in just some wispy little tendrils coming off of this flower head. Okay, loading my brush because toward the bottom of this flower head, these are fairly dark. So I'm even going to drop in a little extra orange down here. They're kind of wild. I'm going to do several layers of those. And we, I left this damp while we're working on this so that the green and the orange can kind of bleed together. And already you can see that we're getting this beautiful variegation on the stems. I'm going to help that out a little bit right here. Okay. And let that all blend right there on the paper and mix on the paper. Let's go to our next flower head, which is this one. And we really should let this dry before, because you see that this flower head, the stem is going to run right through this one. So we, we don't want to do that while it's wet. So while that's drying, let's come down here to the bud. And for the bud, I'm going to make this all oh, this really beautiful little orangey peachy color and let that mix and mingle with some green carry it down the stem somewhat to help out this little connection right here If you think about stems on plants, just like stems on trees, I mean trunks on trees, the bottom part is always going to be thicker than the top part. It gets thinner as it goes up. So let's just thicken up parts of these stems just a little bit. I'm going to drop in a little brown to let that variegate a little more. I see some frisket right here, so that is going to make a beautiful highlight when we take the frisket off there. And let's drop in a little more green on this bud. I'm going to wait until that dries before I add any more to it. I'm just working on the shapes of these stems right now, and I think we need to thicken this part of the stem just a little bit. That highlight is going to be really nice. Okay. Let's let that dry for a few minutes before we mess with it anymore. Okay, 
So now let's put in the bottom of our second flower head here. I'm using sap green mixed with burnt umber. And we're going to do a little hide and seek. Okay, you see the stem here? And it's going to go behind this flower head and come out on this side. Okay, we're going to go behind. And the tricky part about this is to make sure that your, um, your stems meet up correctly on the other side of whatever object you're going behind. So I've gotten a little bit heavier than I wanted to go there, but that's okay. It'll, it will work. at the top. There we go. Okay. Picking up some of our peach color. Gonna come in here. Let that peach blend with the brown. The color is going to be a little heavier at the bottom here. Okay, and then we're going to come, come in with some little frond shapes. You can see why this flower is called prairie smoke. From a distance it actually looks like gray smoke coming off of the top of these fields. always dries lighter than you lay it down and in watercolor we work from light to dark Try to resist the temptation to go back over your strokes. Once you lay something down, let it be. You get a much fresher look to your painting.
time to let that dry. This is a great place to pick up the Frisca from our painting and I'm just using a little rubber cement pickup eraser for that. So we're just going to go around and just very gently pull all of that frisket up. We're not really rubbing the paint, we're just trying to catch that frisket. carefully so we don't pull paper up with it. Okay, now that all the frisket is out, we can work on putting the leaves on the stems. If we look at our reference photo, you can see that these leaves, a lot of them have groupings of three points on each small leaf attached to the stem. A lot like thistle. So I'm working with my sap green mixed with raw umber and I can even put in a little bit of olive. So let's, let's start with the stem. And I'm gonna go ahead and carry that stem off the page so it has a more natural termination to it. And leaf. Remember to pull your eye back from the painting and take in the whole painting. Sometimes we get too focused on details and we forget to look at the whole painting to see what it needs. Okay, so when we come down to the thicker part of the stem, you can see that there aren't many leaves down in this area mostly on the higher parts of the stem so we'll stop there let's use a lighter shade of green and go to the stem right here
this one. Just using my little number two mimic brush. It's a number two round. Now this one up here, if you notice on on this stem here, they're really they're it's different than these types of leaves. So I'm just gonna throw in a very abstract, almost a squiggle, to just give the indication of um, of leaves on that section. In fact, I'm going to switch over to my rigger because the rigger gets, it has a much looser, thinner stroke to it. Okay, I need it a little bit darker. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do for that one. Maybe drop in a little bit of green. To knock that brown back a little bit. This little bud, we need a few little wispy tendrils, just like they're just popping out and bursting out from that bud. pick up a little more upper pink to put in some tendrils. And because I want the um, focus to be on the top of these tendrils, I'll start from the top end and come down instead of from the bottom up. Try not to get into too much of a pattern. Try to stay random.
got a little heavy here. I'm just going to go in and try to wash that out a little bit. So our eye isn't drawn too, uh, too much off to the edge of the paper. Okay, I've added just a little bit of color and reinforced these stems a little bit more. Added some color here. I just uh, used some opera pink and did a little wash in areas just for a little pop of color. And it is time to take our tape off to see what we have. So this is called a prairie smoke flower. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And um, if you enjoyed it, hit follow or subscribe. And be sure to give us a thumbs up, like, or share. Helps boost the page and helps other people to be able to find us a little bit easier. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.